Hi, I'm Kelly Bonga. I am the Head of Science and Aerospace at Balmoral State High School, and I'm going to give you a rundown, a little snapshot of what we do with drones at our school and in our context. So I wanted to start with the Aerospace Gateway to Schools project. Um, it's a Queensland government initiative that we were a pilot school for in 2004. It's now 18 schools that are part of that program and it gives a lot of um, support and opportunities to teachers and students um, in those 18 schools. Um, this year it's been a very great help this year and last year with the aerospace studies, the new senior subject in the new Queensland syllabus. Um, so last year was the first year that we did a year 11 um, subject. So obviously this is our first year of graduates. So the community has been um, a great support through that. And basically anyone who has any sort of skill set um, you can find in that in those 18 schools. So there, I mentioned lots of opportunities um, for students and for teachers. Um, I got to fly that Eurofox, um, get drone licenses. Uh, teachers and students get to get their drone licenses at our school. Talk about that a bit more later. There's also access to rockets, to simulators, to guest speakers, careers, um, paths like pilots, crew, engineering. There's so many different things you can do. Basically, you just have to ask Matt or Joe, and um, they will hook you up with whoever you need. The Boeing Excellence Program started uh, at the same time that our link with the AGISP uh, in 2004. It has been our signature program at our school since then. And every year our students apply for a position in the program. Any student from year seven to 12 can access that program. And um, it's purely on merit, not on age or level, you, amount of experience. This year, they um, got to do a pretty exciting project um, to do with drones, but it's not unusual that they're working with drones, being Boeing Defence. They have a pretty keen interest in drones. This year, though, we are um, working on a skin design for the Loyal Wingman, which is the first combat aircraft designed in Australia since World War II. So the kids were very excited about this and they did a lot of research about what they're used for, what they are going to be um, made out of, what sort of material they're going to have to use uh, for a skin to withstand all the different um, environments that these um, drones are going to be exposed to. And I think they came up with some really cool designs. They learnt some new skills on 3D rendering. Um, I'll show you in the video in the next slide. They really managed to keep that Australian flavour. They used some lots of experts on basically the design. So they got their art teachers to come in and tell them whether their design was a, a good quality or not and how to improve it to make it more pleasing, eye-catching or to their, um, to their customer who is Boeing Defence Australia. And I think they did a really good job of um, building up skills to make the designs digital and professional, as well as meeting the task of developing that skin um, for yeah, an Australian audience. So they, those two have been around since 2017. A bit newer on the scene, we decided we wanted to bring in a STEAM masterclass. Um, it started as a science masterclass. We then introduced it as a STEM masterclass. It's basically um, been happening since the early 2010-ish. Um, we get all of our feeder schools to send five year, the year five students, five or six of them from each school, over to, to complete, complete a couple of workshops with us. So each workshop is a one hour a week, five weeks, their classes at the moment are two concurrent classes, so we get two, um, two groups in for a five-week block. And the programs that we're running at the moment are a UAV challenge and also a um, EV3 uh, Lego Legends class. Um, it was a Sphero class before, um, but we had a change in staffing, so we just have to kind of uh, roll with that and keep up with the staffing that we have and adapt and change. The kids um, get a little bit of um, extension of what they're already doing in Year 5 and they get to come over and see what it's like to be in a high school class and some of the equipment that we get to use. So um, you'll see in this photo here, it's a little um, mud map of the obstacle course that they have to navigate. 
we've got the kids there flying little parrot mambo and uh, it's an action shot you can actually see the paddle pop stick that we tell them is the emergency supply that they have to deliver to a patient so they have to do that quickly and accurately and it is a um, a timed um, event so there's a group that will be the winners at the end and it also allows them to learn manual flight as well as coded flight so the programming in the parrots gives you manual and coded flights so they get to practice with both and choose which one they would prefer to use at this stage most of them are preferring to go with the manual flight rather than the coding which is an interesting side note um, the kids in the other class are doing coding with the ev3s or the lego legends group and they learn how to do they do small tasks every week and then they do, then they build in complexity as they their skills improve. So they can code through the machine, as you can see. Um, this child on the left there is coding through his computer, and then the kids on the right there have coded through the computer, but then are adjusting it manually. As you can see, the buttons on the top there. Um, so we had the primary school sorted, and we had year eleven and twelve sorted, and we thought that we would. Um, branch out and do a certificate three in year 10. So a certificate three in aviation, remote pilot and visual line of sight. We wanted to get kids into drone flying. Um, we thought that was a good pathway for aviation to get kids um, interacting with it. So we brought in this cert three in aviation and we partnered with Aviation Australia and Remote Aviation Australia. And it covers lots and lots of um, theory and practical components for the remote pilot's license. They get to those two things, Certificate 3, which again counts towards their um, QCE. The topics that they cover are general um, aviation knowledge, so getting to know all the acronyms, air law, they look at all the different drone systems, how they interact with each other, they look at navigation, meteorology and human performance and the effect that it can have on uh, the flying a drone and the fatigue that they uh, generally have uh, had some first-hand experience with recently when they completed their practical component. We went out for a day. They have to get five hours up for their certificate three. They have to get 10 hours though for their remote pilot's license, which is an additional qualification. Um, but they've already done so much of it in the certificate three that it's um, it's an well worth doing the extra five hours to try and get the um, remote pilot's license as well. And I've got a video on the next slide of um, one student who'd been flying for about three hours um, total. And um, this is towards the end of the day. And she's trying to do what's called a vertical circle. So she really has to coordinate the movements between the right and her left thumb on the controller. And um, as you can see, it was a little bit um, wobbly. So she's just learning that particular manoeuvre, but she um, will definitely improve um, as she did with all the other maneuvers that she practiced and have already has already had signed off so that's what we do with our year 10 students so that is a little snapshot of four things that we do at Balmoral State High School with drones and uh, more than happy to chat with any of you about those in more detail or any other opportunities or anything that you're doing with drones at your schools thank you